welcome today to Viewpoint. Today we're going to be talking about God's greatest hits. And we're dealing with worship, we're dealing with music, and we're going to have a great time today. And I hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying safe and staying healthy. And may God mightily bless you. We are so appreciative of all of our friends that watch us on a live TV. And also that we have this available on our uh, page, our website page, uh, alivegbc.com. And there you can go and watch some of the programs and you can enjoy the other things and go to our Facebook page. I'll tell you more about that in a few moments. But first, again, I want to welcome you today to Viewpoint. I'm Carlton Duck pastor of Gethsemane Baptist Church. A pleasure to be with you today, and I do hope that you're doing well, staying healthy, taking care of yourself, and practicing all the protocol of good health to keep yourself feeling good. My friend, listen, we're living in a very tough time, aren't we? I mean, the, the days that we're living in, we never thought we would face with pandemics and problems and politics. You name it, everything that's happening in our our nation and in our world is very perplexing. But there is a God who is sovereign and in control, and we just trust Him in all things. We just need today to really keep our heart absorbed with the Word of God. And we really need today to live by faith and trust the Lord in all things. God will never fail you. Well, we're going to be sharing some things in God's Word today and seeking to bless you. And I was telling you about our website AliveGBC.com, and it's really a great site. Now, you can go and check out a lot of things, what we're about, who we are, where we're located, what we're doing. You can also find out some great information on our Facebook page. You can go right to my Facebook page, Carlton Duck. At the top of the website, there's Facebook. Click it. You'll be right there. How about YouTube? Would you like to see some other programs that we're doing and look maybe back into some archives? I have people tell me sometimes, man, I would like to hear that message again. I said, go to our page, our website. You can go back and you can look in the archives and find it and listen to it and watch it again. So all that's available, plus a lot of good spiritual helps for you. That's on AliveGBC.com, and I know you'll be blessed with that. I want to again invite you and remind you that uh, Gethsemane Baptist Church is a great place, a safe place. And let me underscore that, safe place for you to come and bring your family, your kids, your entire family, and worship. And it's an exciting place where the music is so enriching and where the message is so life-changing. And we're right now in a study on the book of Ecclesiastes, and I'm preaching through, finished up with Romans, finally after over a year and a half of that. Now we're in the book of Ecclesiastes, and oh, it's a powerful book that asks a lot of questions, but it really draws us closer to God. Enjoy worship at Gethsemane, 9.30 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. every Sunday. And I know you'll hardly be blessed, and you can bring your kids. We have a great program for our kids in Pew called the Kitty Care Kit. Teens, youngsters, all are indeed involved in this, and it's a great program. We have other incentive programs for our kids, too, that they participate in. We just finished up one. We've started another and, uh, and it really creates a lot of interest with our kids, and they get rewarded, and it's a great blessing. Well, all that said, I'd love for you to be a part of what God's doing in this church. 411 Blue Ridge Street is in the heart of Lynchburg, not hard to find. It's one block off of Lakeside Drive, that's Route 221, here in town. Or if you're coming from Forest Area, uh, you can come down uh, 221, which is, then turns into Lakeside Drive. And you can find us at 411 Blue Ridge Street, right across the entrance to uh, Blue Ridge is right across from a restaurant called JoJo's Pizza, not far from the University of Lynchburg. Come and experience what God is doing in this awesome and wonderful church. Man, it's a privilege to be a part of what God's doing here at GBC. I just believe your heart will be blessed and encouraged in the house of the Lord. Let's talk today more about this song thing and about God's greatest hits and using the springboard of you know, Ephesians 5 to accomplish that today. Now, God is a music lover. And if you'll read through the pages of God's Word, you will see that, you'll experience that, and you will feel that today. God's given us music, and I look at music as a gift from God. As James said, every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from God. 
And as a result of this great gift that he's given us, music then becomes a very important part of our worship experience where we can praise the Lord and worship together. I know that it really is awesome here. Brother Tom, who is our worship leader, he does a meticulous job of matching the music with the message, and it, is, it prepares us for the message, and it, is, it really is a great, great blessing. We're so blessed to have Tom as our worship leader here at GBC. And uh, there are songs that are very powerful. There are songs that are forceful, and they really they can emotionally grip us uh, to the reality of God's presence. Not only does it bring about God's presence, but it also identifies us with God's glory like nothing else can do. As a result, then, no worship service really seems to feel complete without having some music in it. I love music, and I tell you, I've always loved music. It's always been something that I really enjoy, even playing. I, I've had a little bit of musical ability and, and uh, given by God, but I really just love seeing others bless the Lord. I love good spiritual music that will touch your heart. But, you know, if we don't use it in the right way, then understand, then it takes away from. It's important that we use spiritual music that today, as a matter of fact, I'm almost fanatical about it. I like to know who the writers and who the musicians especially are that are doing the song to make sure that their testimony lines up with the music. Well, there's a story about a pastor and a song leader, and, uh, and they were feuding. And thank God we don't have anything like that here at GBC. So this began to manifest itself. It's just a little story to warm you up here a little bit. This, this, it began to manifest itself in the worship services one Sunday, and the preacher preached a sermon about commitment. And the song leader stood up and led the song, I Shall Not Be Moved. Oh, boy. So the next Sunday, the pastor preached a sermon about giving. And the song leader stood up and led the congregation in a song, Jesus Paid It All. Well, the story continues. The following Sunday, the pastor preached a sermon about gossiping. And the song leader stood up and he led a song. And the song is, I love to tell the story. Oh boy, this is good, isn't it? So the pastor became somewhat frustrated. And so he went home. He considered resigning. He came to church the next Sunday and he told the congregation of his consideration. And yes, the song leader stood up. And he led them in a song, Oh, Why Not Tonight? So, <laughs> the next Sunday, the pastor resigned. And in explaining that Jesus had led him away, and the song leader stood up and led one more song, and it was, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Well, that's a cool little story today. It gives us a little humor brings a laugh or a smile to us anyway. And in these days in which we're living, we need all the smiles and humor that we can get, don't we? But uh, through music, it's often called the, the universal language of mankind. Unfortunately, we often too are familiar with the, the problems that are associated with this kind of communication. Um, there are things that, w that are dealt with here. Actually, music is not so much universal in language, actually, but the, it sometimes can become a universal aggravation. So it's not a battle for righteousness or holiness, but instead a struggle over formats, styles, and volumes. I mean, people get upset about the, the, the music. I don't like that song, or I don't like it's too loud, or whatever the case may be. Listen, we have to be one selective in what we use today. I know there are some awesome songs, wonderful songs, out there. Not only the old songs, but some of the new songs are good too. And then there are some songs that just does not paint the image that you want. So every generation has battled some of the newer forms of music expression. And, uh, and a lot of people say, well, if they don't sing, not, they don't sing nothing but something out of the hymn book, then, you know, I, I'm not going to church there. And I've heard of people even saying, well, you know, I wouldn't go to church there because they use screens and have the words on the screens, what's wrong with that? You know, sure, the hymn books are great, and we keep the hymn books in our church. They are in the pew. But yes, we use 
well, right now we're not using congregational singing due to the pandemic, but when we were doing it and when we go back to doing it, we, yes, have words on screen. Nothing wrong. That hasn't changed the song. It hasn't changed the lyrics in the song. It's the same song. It's just the opportunity that folks that can't see good sometimes in those small print in that hymn book or whatever the case may be, and I don't want to chase rabbits here, but the fact is a lot of times that's exactly what we do. We chase rabbits over things that has no significance and has no bearing on anything. I mean, God's not going to whack us over the head with a baseball bat because we sung a song because the lyrics were on the screen. So, you know, we've got to be careful of this. Paul agreed with uh, this in Ephesians chapter 5, and he gives us some explanation of what it means to be filled with the Spirit of God. And that's so important today. And make sure you're filled with God's Spirit and not the wrong and not filled with the wrong spirit today. But he also knew the importance of our worship to God through music and how it happens in our lives. Let me give you an example. Ephesians 5, 18. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be ye, what? Filled with the Spirit. The Spirit of God. In order for you to be filled with God's Spirit, you've got to involve your life in spiritual things. You've got to involve yourself in the Word of God. You've got to involve yourself in prayer. You've got to involve yourself in worship before God, in the house of God. You've got to really put the priorities where they belong and good Christian music. You know, folks, listen, it's important. And there are some awesome, awesome songs that will bless and encourage our heart. Paul contrasts two ways of living. On the one hand, he argues against drunkenness, and certainly I agree with that. And this is the way lost people live. They, they are seeking the things of the world. The things of the world are not your solution. Maybe you've got some problems going on in your life or in your home today. And it's because of worldliness that has crept into your home. And right now, and listen, I know a lot of people blame, well, the pandemic, COVID-19, the coronavirus, and all the issues, and the politics, and everything else. Folks, listen today. None of that drove you to doing things you should not be doing. You made that choice. You made that decision. What you need to do, and this is very simple, and I'm not being hard on you. I'm just telling you. What you need to do is get on your knees, ask God to forgive you, repent of those sins, and get that garbage out of your life. Get the world in this and get back into the things of God. Start with the Word. Start with prayer. Try to go to church. I know it's, it's tough right now. But there are churches like ours that are providing a clean environment for you to come and worship in. So you've got to understand today, if you're living like a lost person, you're probably lost in actuality today. And God has a solution for that. I know people, Christians, may what we call backslide and get lured back into the, some of the vices of the world that they came out of. If God brought you out of that, you don't need to go back into it. And if you're going back into it, stop it now. And today, get your life today back in tune and focus with the Lord. But lost people live like lost people. They don't have any conviction about the way they're living. They don't have any conviction the way they, their lives are reflecting the world. They have no conviction about the language or the things that they do. Folks, come on. And I know, well, it's a new year, preacher. I'm going to clean my life up. You can't do it. Only God can turn your life around. Therefore, if any man, any person being Christ, they're a new creature. Old things are passed away. That means all the old vices now have been removed. You don't have to do that. You know why you're doing it? Because you want to do it. You don't have to today to immerse yourself in the garbage of this world. So you do not have to live today by being addicted to substance or things, or any other the mess, or pornography on the internet, or whatever it may be. Listen, if you're lost, your, lo your life is out of control, and if you don't get saved, then the Word of God says that you're not going to heaven. And we don't know when we shall die. Life is as a vapor, it appears, it's gone. What's important is that you know Christ is your personal Savior, and that you've received Him into your heart and your life, and that you're born again. So secondly, Paul states there is a better way to live, and that better way to live is to be filled with God's Spirit. Thank God we can be filled with His Spirit today. And so therefore, when you are filled with God's Spirit, 
your allurement to the world then diminishes. You don't want that garbage anymore. So verses 19 through 21 explains what it looks like to be controlled by the Spirit of God. And you can read that on your own time in Ephesians 5. So to be filled with the Spirit, you then are controlled by Christ to the point of yielding to Him every moment of every day. See, yielding to God is just not a Sunday event. It's an everyday event. You need to yield to God. You need to surrender to God. You've got to say, God, not my will, but your will be done. Question, what will a spirit-filled Christian then do? Well, let me see if I can answer that. To be a spirit-filled Christian today, when it comes to music, we will always evaluate substance over style. Ephesians 5.19, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. So have you ever wondered what kind of music God likes? You ever thought about that today? Well, there's actually a song book in the Bible that is called P-S-A-L-M-S, Psalms. It's a song book of the Bible. And if you will look carefully, you'll see some God's greatest hits in there in the book of Psalms. You'll, you will find uh, you will, will not find any notes, you won't find uh, any chords, or you won't find any charts, or any rhythms, or things of that nature that's involved in music, neither will you find any style. It's just the content of what is contained there. And I love it when a songwriter will take a song, or take a, a portion of scripture, and then write it, and make a song out of it. And it's so awesome. I know we've had quite a few songs that we've used on screen here that uh, with artists that we use in our services that it has been phenomenal that really they are singing the Word of God. And it's beautiful. So there is 45,000 45, words of content in the book of Psalms, but there's not one single note, not one single style, not one single rhythm so therefore, God is more concerned with the substance of what we sing than the style of what we sing. Uh, I like the slow songs. I like the, the more aggressive songs as far as the rhythm. But look at Colossians 3.16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual psalms, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So there... This is the parallel verse to Ephesians 5.19. So, of course, same writer, but he paralleled those verses. One to the church at Colossae, the other, of course, to the church at Ephesus. So, the content of what we're saying ought to be spirit-filled and, and scripture-saturated. That's why it's always good. I mean, the old hymn, Amazing Grace, says it all. It talks about the grace of God. And, and some of the other more modern songs that we have today are just absolutely astounding and so good. Um, Shane and Shane does a song about God's mercy, and it's awesome. And uh, Selah, they, they do songs that has about the cross. And man, those are songs that just ignite your soul with the blessings of God. So in Ephesians 19, we, we find it says, speaking to yourselves in psalms, and when you're filled with the Spirit of God, then you're saturated with the Scripture. It's hard for you to be saturated with the Scripture, though, when you're not in it, isn't it? You've got to get in the Word of God so the Word of God can get in you. And so what happens is it starts bringing, breaking forth and singing in your spirit and in your heart. And it brings a joy to your soul today. We're encouraging uh, one another in songs. I know we're blessed with great musicians and great artists and singers here at Gethsemane. You'll be blessed by the music. Singing is a natural expression of our Christianity today. It makes us feel the joy of the Lord in our heart, in our lives. It changes our outlook. It encourages us. It lifts us up when we're down. It strengthens us when we're weak. And so singing is a natural gift that God has given us today. And the Lord has given us those songs and those things to sing to ultimately honor Him. So singing is a natural expression. Here it is. Singing is a natural expression, then, of our faith. Psalm 33 and 1, listen to this. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. 
And oh, what a difference that indeed makes today. It is joyful today for the righteous who has been snatched from hell to sing of the joy of the Lord. And man, it just is something about it that when you're singing, I can't really accurately express it in the King's English, but I'm telling you, it makes such an awesome difference in your life. You are, here's a good way to put it, you are what you're saying. If you're singing that same old stuff about, you know, she left me last night for some other guy, or I found, I found the answer to all my problems in a bottle, or all this other crazy, stupid stuff, or whether you think you can shoot up and snort up and sniff up and do all that other stuff to relieve yourself of your problems and pains. All you're doing is just adding more problems and pains to your life. You don't need that stuff. All you need is a good dose of the Holy Ghost in your life that will make a difference today. So music reflects what's in our heart to the Lord, and it also reinforces that commitment that we have to the Lord. It will remind you of the old walk with Him. It will keep you close to the Lord. Martin Luther said this, The devil takes flight at the sound of music, just as he does at the words of, of theology. And for this reason, the prophets always combines theology and music, the teaching of truth and the chanting of songs and hymns. After theology, I give a highest place and a greatest honor to music. Martin Luther said that. So the absolute essential ingredient that we must have today in worship is the Word of God, first and foremost, but all, a close second to that is also to have some great spiritual music that today will enrich our soul and bless us. So music takes the Word of God and it just really makes it become alive in our lives as the people of God. We use music in teaching purpose to reinforce uh, the substance of our faith and really to draw us to a closer commitment to God. So Paul gives us three categories in verse 19. One, he says psalms. Psalms were sacred songs, and realizing that they were accompanied by music, and uh, they were familiar with what we call hymns today. So the psalmists and the psalms are the great hymns of the faith. Second thing he used was not only the psalms, but he used what we know as hymns. So a hymn is a song of praise to God, and, and, it's, it's, and those who sing it do not sing it for self-glorification, they sing, we sing those songs to glorify God. It's not a song about God, but a song that is sung to God. Thirdly, not only do we have psalms, not only do we have hymns, but we also have spiritual songs. And so spiritual songs, they emphasize something very important in our life, and that is our testimony. And it's a, a variety of the categories that we communicate what God has done in us, what God is doing through us. So realizing that today, we can use a variety of music forms to praise God. And we are to uh, use every means at our disposal to express a heart of worship before the Lord. So we, we, we just need to ask, does the songs we sing teach the truth of the scriptures? We can worship. We, we really today cannot worship until music becomes the means that ushers us into the very mighty presence of a glorious and a good God today. So therefore today, we have got to get in God's presence and praise Him and magnify His name and worship Him. God's con concern is twofold today. And as we're near the end of the program, let me move hastily here. It is consistent with the Scriptures. That's very important. It's got to be consistent with the Word of God. Secondly today, does it come from your heart? Folks, you don't sing to put on a show. We don't have entertainers. Well, it's not what God has called us to be. We are blessers. First blessing God and then blessing others today. Then there's a second thought today. We are to enjoy God's sovereignty more than our struggles today. So Ephesians 3, uh, 5 and 20 says, Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul tells us thanksgiving is a second sign that we are spirit-filled and that we're seeking the Lord and serving Him, living for Him, calling upon Him. If God is, is sovereign, then we are to choose to enjoy the sovereignty that God is in control. And despite whatever struggles that we're facing, do we have a lot of struggles going on now? Yeah, we do. But you know what? God's still in control, though, isn't He? We have to trust the Lord. Third thing, we are to exercise submission 
over selfishness if we are going to be spirit-filled. Ephesians 5 and 21, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So Jesus submitted to the needs of others. Folks, we need to submit to the needs of God of what he desires for us to do and to submit to the needs of others to bless people today. I believe today that music is a great tool for us to accomplish, to will the work of God in our lives that we can glorify him, exalt him, and praise him in all things today. Yeah, God's God's music list is great and awesome. And what a great blessing that we have to honor him in music and to sing and to praise him. And you know, not only that, but to bless others. If you've got a talent for the Lord to sing, use it for God's glory. And even if you don't, you can still make, as the old fellow said, a joyful noise unto the Lord, right? But anyway, it is good to praise God in all things, and music is a vital part of doing that today. But just make sure that it is of God and today that it honors God. I sure appreciate you today tuning in to Viewpoint that we desire to bring you the word that will enrich, encourage, and inspire your life. And you will certainly find the, that style of preaching and you'll find the presence of God so strongly at Gethsemane Baptist Church. This Sunday, 9.30 a.m., 11.30 a.m., don't forget, bring your kids. And we have the Kitty Care Kids for the teens and the younger kids. And it's a great program for kids. We've got the incentive programs that our kids can work on that's really rewarding to them. And then you have the opportunity to come to about an hour, hour and ten minutes at the most worship service that will lift your heart, encourage your soul, and bless you beyond measure today. 411 Blue Ridge Street is the address here in Lynchburg, Virginia, one block off of Route 221. That's Lakeside Drive, and I just believe that you will be mightily blessed of the Lord. I would love to see you, and I know our folks would be. And don't forget, we take all the precautions to give you a safe environment to worship. We practice the protocol, but we still praise the Lord. So come and join with us. And please visit us on our website. That's Alive, A-L-I-V-E, G-B-C. You've seen that trailer on the foot of the screen there throughout this um, time of program. AliveGBC.com. You've got information about the church. You've got inspiration and encouragement. You also can go to our Facebook page, which is Carlton Duck, instantly from that site with a click on. You can go to the uh, YouTube and watch some of our programming and other things that we're doing and that we're going to be adding also. So it's a great place for you to hang out and come worship with us. It's been a pleasure to have been with you today. I'm Carlton Duck, and again, thank you today for tuning in. Please tell your friends about this program, and certainly keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. We may be in a tough time, but we've got an awesome God who's with us and for us and who will bring us through whatever we're facing. Great is our God and greatly to be praised. Put your confidence in the Lord. He will never fail you. And keep looking to Jesus because he is the author and the finisher of your faith. God bless you. Have an awesome week and keep looking to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God bless you today. We'll see you later.